welcome to the Donahue Group. We're delighted that you could join us for some really good conversation. Um, we're all steamed up here about various election issues, <laughs> and so, you know, there's a little energy running around the set, and I'm going to start by introducing Ken Risto, a mere social studies teacher, but a rock, a rock at Sheboygan South High School, guiding Very younger good. teachers and doing a... <laughs> right. A rock is probably <laughs> about right, according doing to my a critics. Fine, doing a fine job. Also in education, Professor Tom Pineski, mathematics professor, associate dean at UW Sheboygan. Getting really steamed up here, and I just love it. You know, your cheeks get kind of red, oh. and it's pretty sweet. Biting former, my tongue all the way. <laughs> <laughs> former state senator Cal Potter. We're going to have a little uh, Kleenex there for Cal, so that uh, <laughs> when he bites through his tongue, you know, we can at least sop up the blood. I'm Mary Lynn Donahue. Uh, I'm a lawyer, usually, with uh, O'Neill Cannon Holman de Young in town. And um, so we're going to get started on some state issues. And I just have a sense that we might morph into some partisan role, remarks. Some, you know, all I know is I rely on John Stewart for my uh, news, and I, that seems to make me At pretty smart these days. The DNC channel, NBC channel, yeah. I mean, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> fair and balanced. I think that's the fair and balanced fair and challenge. Balanced. Right, I mean, right, the, right yeah, exactly. It's the fair and balanced challenge. Yeah. 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 Yeah, just put Bill O'Reilly together with uh, whoever. Um, I think that some of the more interesting news, um, uh, and again, the, the, the voting problems uh, for the state of Wisconsin, now governed by the Government Accountability Board, which is the merger of the State Elections Board and the State Ethics Board, governed by six, I think, retired judges, um, now is being sued by um, our um, illustrious um, Attorney General, uh, Mr. Van Hollen. Uh, and I think it's a brand new lawsuit, and uh, his basic... Um, it's the only one in the country of its kind, so far. Right. And no other state attorney general has filed a, a lawsuit uh, along these lines. Well, the, the gravamen of his complaint, as far as I can tell, is that the database of the Department of Transportation is matched up against the database of that this, our wonderful Accenture contract. You, you remember we've talked for the years that we've been on this show about how Accenture is really messed up and poorly performed on its contract with the state of Wisconsin to get a decent voter list together. Uh, we've spent millions and millions of dollars. It's still not done. It's still not functional. It appears to be getting worse instead of better. But the DOT databases don't necessarily match up with the Accenture database. And therefore, Van Hollen wants to suggest that there's all sorts of fraud and, and that this whole piece you know, ought to get settled. I think the timing is lousy. I think the substance of the suit is lousy, based on my limited knowledge. But I'm interested in your thoughts. I'll let Tom go first because I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. It's a Republican don't Attorney a, General. Tell us <laughs> what he's doing right. Huh? Well, see, I, I don't. What's he's suing it because? Why is he suing? They, about, they don't line up. But what's he asking? Yeah, there's about twenty. There's about twenty. Per, uh, what they're saying is that when you look at that Department of Transportation list where we get our licenses or, you know, both types oh, okay. of information. And you look at the state voter registration list, about 20% of those names don't match. Right. One out of five potential voters. So my name might not Exactly. Match and in fact, is. some of the, in, in fact, I believe some of the actual folks on the accountability board, in, their names were red flagged. Right. Um, and Retired so the question judges. is, the question is, most people are, are pretty well convinced that the vast majority, the vast majority of those, those non- not those those okay. non-matches is because somebody along the way inputted the wrong letter, or somebody's got a middle initial wrong, or there's street is S T as opposed to S T R E S T R E E T. Okay, so that's the nuts and bolts. But what right. is the suit about? Who? I mean, well, the how? suit is about that the state is not in compliance with the national law. That at a certain point in the process, that that voter registration list has got to certify that those folks are in fact registered and qualified voters, and so. Now that this Wisconsin and there's other state, a couple other states that are in the same position because of the incompetence of the people that they hired, they've gone through that deadline. And so yeah. what Van Hollen is, is arguing is that Wisconsin's about to allow all sorts of unread, unqualified voters to walk in their polls and vote. 
which means that you're potentially allowing Democrats or Republicans, for that matter, to challenge those votes come November. Now, one way out of that is to have. What could he have? For, what's the relief? Well, I don't the know. relief is he, he, well, the relief is is that he might he might be asking that those people who don't match up have to have to cast provisional ballots, mm -hmm. and then uh, they're going to have to okay. be checked, hand checked, one by one, and confirmed. Which means that if it's in a close election in Wisconsin, and it probably will be, you know, who knows between now and November what's going to happen in terms of the okay. dynamics of this presidential election, that. Wisconsin's electoral, 10 electoral votes might be really uh, up for grabs. And then, of course, this is like Florida all over again because constitutionally, your electors in December have to cast those 10. Well, if we're still fighting through and challenging which one of these votes and which ones count, will Wisconsin have the opportunity to file those 10 electoral votes? Okay, okay. and is it the suit in, in the state or in the federal court? Um, I, I, it, it is not clear here. I, it, it, oh, I'm sorry. It was filed in Dane County Circuit Court. Yeah. Okay. I would say this would be clearly a state, state issue, issue, not state a federal issue. issue. And okay. Yeah. And so they've got some pretty smart judges in Dane County, but the problem is, is that he's done this 60 days prior to the election, and so it. it, it I think this brings into sharp relief. I mean, we're taping here in September, and McCain and Obama are literally neck and neck. Um, this is, this is 2000 again. But you're all, you're, it's, it's and like we have, a big and we turnout have. and you've got the assembly races and you've got the state senate sure. races. Mm -hmm. And you could, if you challenge it on the uh, presidential vote, I mean, it also carries down to the mm -hmm. assembly correct. race. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. What the attorney general of the state ought to be doing is saying, how can my staff be helpful in resolving this this situation because it is not an example of voter fraud. It's an example of trying to keep track of one out of four people who move every year. You've inputted into the computer system old databases from elections that in Milwaukee and elsewhere where they don't have staff to keep them up. They don't purge dead people regularly because they don't have the staff. You've got, like I said, particularly yeah. in inner city people probably, you know, you hear of you being in education, you hear of teachers who literally don't have the same class at the end of the year that they had the first, the first year because there's such mobility amongst exactly. poor folks. So those people, you know, they, they move. Plus, what is it, eight years before you renew your driver's license? So how, you know, I- 10? Uh, 10 years is it's, it's now. I know my previous, you know, addresses could be screwed up in some databases because I moved, you know, six years ago. And if you, you know, you've got all this, logistical problems of inputting data and trying to keep it up for a million voters for a database that went online August 6th. I know, it's, it's I, I mean, I, my sense is Van Hollen has a tiger by the tail here, and if he's not careful, it's just gonna come around and bite his head off. But it can uh, be, I think he sees it as a useful tool. If it is close for the assembly, it is close for the president, these are all bases then he of But what if it's to close for the Republicans? <laughs> Yeah, well. I, I mean, we're yeah. taping at a point, uh, and of course there's still two months away, but we're taping at a point when the McCain candidacy appears to be, to me at least, in ascendancy. Um, and I mean, as we said before, Palin has certainly taken a fairly moribund campaign and, and breathed a whole lot of new life into it. And all of a sudden it's great because all of a sudden a lot of men who really thought Hillary Clinton as a woman couldn't handle anything are now really confident that Sarah Palin can. So the sexism that had previously existed has now magically disappeared, and I, for one, am grateful about that. But, I mean, Wisconsin could easily go Republican, and if, if, if Van, I mean, Van Hollen's suit appears to me, at least to me, to be pretty politically based. It's not a problem-solving technique, as you pointed out. In two months, we're asking the Dane County Circuit Court to fix something that hasn't been able to be fixed nationwide mm -hmm. since 2000. Yeah, I mean, but is the Circuit Court asked to fix it? I mean, is it, that's what I, uh, well, what's a, since they don't match, uh, how do you resolve, you, you can't fix the, the physical not So matching. do you enjoin people in so the state of Wisconsin can't vote? So you get somebody vote? that doesn't match, the, the, the alternative is to Provisional ballot? Provisional ballot. That's the alternative. So they'll have to rule the alternative. And if they don't rule the alternative, what other choice do they have? Just throw the suit out? 
I mean, they're, supposedly they could do that. Yeah. I mean, the judges, you know, a judge has, you know, some equitable power to craft remedies to, you know, that could hopefully address something, but a circuit court judge in two months yeah. cannot address what the state of Wisconsin, using millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars, can't address now. And hopefully by the time of our next taping, there'll have been some action on this and we'll have read up on it a little bit more and can speak even smarter about it than we are right now. But um, Interesting. What was, it was a bad law from the federal government in the first place. It really was. Uh, voting is something that the integrity thereof should be taken care of on a local level. Just like we take care of our schools, we, we make mm -hmm. sure kids are educated, and if they aren't, we locally find out why the kid isn't in school. And it was, you know, voting is handled, should be handled in the same way. For some way that a database in Madison, Wisconsin is going to keep track of over a million people and whether they move or not and say, because you moved one out of four people in this year prior to voting, you can't vote. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I think, what a screwy idea that is. I mean, it's and I mean, oh, well, we're potentially, again, 20%. So if you, let's say you have a high voter turnout and you say you have a million votes cast, which is probably what's going to happen. One-fifth means 200,000 provisional ballots will have to be somehow in some standard yet to be defined in a process yet to be defined uh, are going to be confirmed such that the state, Secretary of State of Wisconsin can quali quali you know, finally certify the election such that in the first... And I'm sorry, I didn't walk in. What is it, the first Tuesday after the first Monday in December? The electors of Wisconsin have to cast their 10. That's a really narrow window. Mm -hmm. And so then you've got really the same sort of legal issues that you had. It's very similar legal issues you had in Bush v. Gore, which the Supreme Court said, by the way, is not precedent setting, <laughs> which is stunning to me in a whole other way. Well, and of course, that's but, not true. But... but but, that, but there, there again, they simply said, you know, the clock is running, we've got to make a decision, and so we're going to make the decision. Well, then what does that mean? All provisional ballots count? You know, what does that all mean? And, and, and this is, again, a really very, 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 very interesting uh, yeah. process that's and, going to have to know, be played out. To try to find a remedy, I mean, yep. federal government <clears throat> basically has said, well, do you have to be in a well, resident 30 days and you can vote? And then the fact that we have... Uh, on-site voter registration, so you got people moving in and out of the state, living here 30 days, want to vote, go into the voting, you know, want to register. I mean, how do you keep a database in Madison, Wisconsin, up to date without uh, having some problems with uh, ac so-called accuracy? And sure. the flip side of it being that we regularly decry the fact that not anywhere near enough people vote. Yeah. I mean, 4% of Sheboygan County voters came out on September 9th, and obviously, I mean, there's some reasons for that, but 4%. Yeah. Teeny, teeny, tiny. Mm -hmm. And I think in the Kerry um, Bush election, Wisconsin was up to 60, 65% yep. turnout, which is huge. Mm -hmm. That's not huge. 60%? I mean, we should have 80%, 90% of folks coming out to vote. and. So again, we're making the system more difficult, more corrupt, less user-friendly, much more expensive. Are you gonna have 200,000 people sign affidavits in the month between the election and the electoral college vote? Um, what was he thinking, I guess, is, is sort of my, is, well, is my question. Well, I think he's thinking partisan politics. I mean, yeah. who are the ones that are not going to be meshing on the two databases. They're going to be poor people who move around, they're students who move around, mm -hmm. people, students who all of a sudden decide they're going to vote in Madison because they got an apartment there rather than voting back where mom and dad used to take them to vote. You know, so those are the type of situations and you know how those uh, poor inner city people vote and those university people vote, what their tendency is uh, and it's not of the party of the attorney general. Right. Well and sadly poor people tend not to vote which is you know, another whole issue. We'll have more next time, and uh, and we'll see where we go. It'll be What's next? It'll be interesting to see what <laughs> what judge is uh, is. Um, What's next, Mary? Is uh, is assigned to the case. Settle down, Ken. Just settle down. Uh, I'm pumped. On a little higher level, let me just take the air right out of your sails. Um, Senator Feingold has uh, announced that he's launching an initiative 
uh, designed to uh, boost uh, R&D, research and development for small businesses. Is Some, he for motherhood too? So cynical. I mean, I'm against R&D uh, for small businesses. And <laughs> <laughs> I want that to all to go to big corporations. Well, we're going to have a substantive discussion about economic development in Wisconsin, okay. whether you want to or not. Okay. Good idea. To I have think this I'm all for initiative. anybody against economic development on the set. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. Um, he's the initiative is dubbed now. See, I'm, I just feel like Sorry. I can't even talk about this. E4 economy, employment, education, and energy. I think the ed, uh, the education piece of it is pretty interesting, and um, um, uh, it's a good deal for Wisconsin. So. I'm not getting any takers on this, am I? Well, no, no, I mean, not not no, one I think, single one. I know I will, because now you, you could accuse me of killing it, so I'll I'll, I'll try to resuscitate <laughs> this right. dead horse. No, all right. No, I think I think you know, <laughs> not renewable energy as a uh, source of employment is going to be one of the great waves of the future. And the states that somehow figure out how to bring venture capital in the state, the mines in the state, and and create those kinds of jobs are going to be winners, you know, as well as you know, pharmaceuticals. And Wisconsin already is. Uh, a leader in you know stem cell research and, and genetic. Um, I hate to use that word genetic engineering, but you know the, that sort of those kind of 21st century industries are going to be replacing the old smokestack industries that provided employment for our people. Um, so to the degree that we that you know the, the real issue is, can government really help that process along? I and think they, I think it can. Um, and I think it I should. think it clearly did in in, in the in genetic engineering and in those areas where Madison was clearly, you know, a leader. Well, we know where our strengths are. They're they're not in cheap labor. Mm -hmm. Cheap labor was in China, and now it's moving to places like <laughs> Vietnam and Thailand, mm -hmm. and you know they're even moving out of China in some places in some urban areas where the w wages have gotten too high. So you know we don't pl we can't play that game, but we can utilize the University of Wisconsin and the technical college system that we have here to train people and uh, provide incentives for people to do their research and development and provide jobs in Wisconsin. And I think uh, Obama's message is one that I, I think is long overdue. We have carte blanche that if you're in business, particularly if you're a big business, uh, we'll give you tax breaks no matter whether you're doing your business in China or where, we ought to start looking at what we can do to to encourage development and growth in Wisconsin. Uh, we are not a warm state. We're not a state that's uh, got cheap labor, but we've got good education and we've got good work ethic, and I think we ought to look at the tax code and other things to target that. It's, it, I find it absolutely ridiculous for us to have not had some of these criteria um, to, to try to encourage growth and development in our own country, and particularly in our own state. Mm -hmm. so, I, I miss the, uh, the wait, to encourage growth of big business or business, you tax them. Is that what you were saying? No, you give them tax breaks. Oh, you okay. give them well, targeted breaks uh, right. when they when they do their because R and D work. is expensive, and it's, there's yes. no return unless they find something. It's just money poured down a hole for a while, and they keep doing R and D, R and D, and until you find something that they can make a profit on. Uh, that's money, so they need the tax breaks. Well, and, and of course, corporations in Wisconsin do get huge tax breaks and constitute now a pretty tiny percentage of the taxes that the state of Wisconsin receives. The, the percentage, I think, has gone from about 23% down to 3%. So, so actually, for businesses, Wisconsin is not necessarily a tax hell. It's actually kind of a tax heaven. But I think it, it speaks to what I really do think is a, is a changing idea of the relationship between business and government. In the old traditional Republican model, you know, it would be government stay away from us. Um, now, I think there's a partnership there that is pretty clear. The, um, uh, we spoke in, in our last, uh, last month about the uh, agreement that was signed among all the local governments <clears throat> agreeing to work together to encourage businesses to come into Sheboygan County. And I think you're just seeing those partnerships now. Uh, but I think Cal's point is extremely well taken, is that it needs to, that, that when tax breaks are given or when funding is given, um, there really needs to be a pay back to the communities and to the people who are trying to make a living here. Who are now paying for it through their income tax and sales tax. Exactly. 
exactly. So, um, I good for Russ Feingold. I think it's a I think it's an interesting initiative. You know, as, as an aside, this is kind of not related, but related because it involves energy. I do not like. I mean, we travel to Madison. We go through Fond du Lac, and we got these windmills, these wind-powered mills, and mm -hmm. they're just coming up like. Uh, they just all of a sudden there's none there, and then the next time you look, there's uh, yeah. 10, 12 of them there. That is such pollution, visible pollution, and all those neighbors gotta not like it because it makes noise if you just drive through and you listen, and you could hear it. Just and we're, we're polluting the the countryside with these things. So we say we need wind energy, but we're I don't know. Somebody's going to rise up pretty soon and say, "I don't like this," and I'm I'm already saying I, I don't. I wouldn't want to live near it. Not in my backyard, kind of thing. It's just bad news. I, my, my uncle's a farmer. Um, my my mom's brother is a farmer, and he lives right in that area. And he has one or two on his farm properties, and, oh. of, and for which he, of course, receives a, a fee or of some sort or another. Yeah. And I asked him about the noise, and he said, "Oh yeah, you can hear them. You know, after a certain amount of time." He said, uh, you know, you get, you get accustomed to that noise because it's there. Uh -huh. He said, but, uh, you know, as a farmer, I've gotten used to the cow manure smells, and uh, this is a way of bringing income into my yeah. farm, and, and as long as the neighbors aren't screaming. I think you're going to see what will be interesting is as you have more, if you continue to have more sprawl out in Sheboygan, uh, Sheboygan County, Fond du Lac County, uh, and homes get built near there, whether that's going to be an issue or not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, they're ideally situated in places that are pretty desolate. Um, I mean, if you... Well, in Wisconsin, there isn't a lot of uh, area where you can put them. In other words, mm -hmm. whether it's Fond du Lac County or you go down, go through Mayville on Highway 49, you'll see them. Uh, that's the same Niagara Cuesta that goes all the way right. up, mm -hmm. down there. It's a wind area. Exactly. Know? Yeah, so you have to have a wind area, and, yeah. and then I do think you need an area that's relatively unpopulated. Yeah. Um, California has had windmills forever and just huge yeah. hillsides of windmills and they're sort of like those big robots in Star Wars that come marching. Yeah. I mean they're just they're huge and, and they're out there. I, I think it's pretty interesting. I think you bring up an interesting point is that alternate energy, all energy has some price tag of some kind whether it's aesthetic or financial mm -hmm. or health or availability. Um, it, it, there's just there is no easy answer. I think your your wife, the stockbroker, would say, "Don't put all of your eggs in one basket." And I think, in terms of energy policy development, that that's that that's not a bad way of that's not a bad way of approaching it. And working with alternate energy um, programs, projects, I think, is pretty important and uh, is forward thinking. And how government supports that and how business takes advantage of it, I think, is 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 tough. But yeah, lots of people don't like windmills, and um, I'm not sure I'd want one in my backyard. I think the issue next, you know, somewhere down the line, because they're making rapid progress yes, with um, sun, with solar panels, is fairly soon, depending on the how energy prices continue to go and what direction they go into, having them on your roof will be, uh, and your home and your residences will be getting pretty close to being cost efficient and creating your own energy and to the degree that you don't use it, it goes back and it really you know, rolls back your meter. So you're going to be interesting to see as you go, for example, our home really does have a fairly large expanse facing south, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I know there's some people unhappy with, you know, the new TV antenna, the, the dishes you know, kind of sticking around aesthetically. And it'll be interesting to see how subdivisions uh, and their, their covenants will allow that visual to be, you know, allowed in their, in their properties or not too. Solar it's panels be... aren't as awful as they used to be, though, no, are they? No, they're, they're getting, yeah, they're getting more, um, they're less obtrusive and they're less ugly looking. No yeah. question well, I about think it. the future is going to be a photovoltaic cell, right. which is a, a panel that's very thin. Before mm -hmm. it was the hot water system where you mm -hmm. put hot pipes through a panel that had black background and heated the water. Mm -hmm. Now it's going to be producing electricity. Yeah. Uh, it, it'll be interesting how this whole thing pay, plans out because the, the towers that you're seeing put up now are being put up by We Energies and, know, yeah. and utilities to produce energy in an alternative manner because they're 
by law forced to, by a certain date, have a certain percentage of their production right. by alternative methods. When you go to photovoltaics on your roof, you're starting to get into not the corporate area, mm -hmm. but the individual looking yeah. at whether it's more economical to produce your own and invest in your own than it is to buy from the utility. And the sad part about it is, and I've said this before, is 30 years ago, you know, Jimmy Carter said we should be investing in a lot of these things, um, but they laughed at him, and well, now it's coming to a point where we don't like to buy foreign oil, and what are our alternatives? Well, the alternatives are to mandate utilities do something different, and what are utilities do? You know, they're not going to put photovoltaic cells on your roof, they're going to put up wind farms, and you know, things that are just an alternative generating system of the utility, mm -hmm. and it really isn't probably the way that we totally should be going. We should be going. Fuel cells for the home. I mean, look at your spacecrafts, for example, are all produced by, are run by fuel cells. There's, there's no reason why we shouldn't have had research into fuel cells a long time ago. And that's exactly, go back to where we were earlier this, this, in this segment. This is one of the really key um, areas where government and business and partnership could make great advances and create all sorts of jobs for Wisconsinites. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I would like as opposed record, to somebody else. I would like the record to reflect that we sort of agree with Tom. And that doesn't happen very often, and so I think that we most should people, just... Most I people think that you don't see them think it's like one of those Dutch things, you know, <laughs> yeah. like, the, like the cookies I used to eat as a kid, and they actually see these things, and they do look... They're, they really are... Uh, Space-like. Yes. Yes, yeah. Star yes. Wars. Yeah, yes. They're, they're, um, yes, they are. They're actually very elegant. I mean, they're tall and they're beautifully designed, but they make a lot of noise. Mm. But I, I agree with Tom Paneski. We, <laughs> we only okay, have a couple of... Right you do, you do. <laughs> it's on tape. You know, we're, we're good here. Um, we need to uh, talk just in our last couple of minutes. Um, my um, uh, Wisconsin Democracy Campaign Bulletin came to me. Uh, they had sent out uh, surveys to uh, legislative candidates, uh, 25 for state senate, 243 for the assembly. Um, of the 25 candidates for state senate, only seven replied um, to a questionnaire regarding ideas on campaign finance reform, yay or nay, just most people didn't respond. Um, and of the uh, 243 candidates for state assembly, 95 replied to the survey. Um, McCabe goes on to say there's not a single state senate district up for election in 2008 where the voters will have the benefit of knowing the positions of both both major party candidates on democracy reform issues. We only have a minute left, but I think it stinks. Why can't you answer one of these questionnaires? I mean, we've talked on this program over and over about campaign finance reform. Nothing's changing, nothing's happening. Well, all these candidates are Power recipients. of incumbency. Yeah, yeah. 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 recipients of the machine sure. that operates today, and since the, the, that's the gift horse to say, I don't like it, and then continue for them to take money from the old sources, they become hypocrite if they'd say, um, I don't like it. So. Well, I, I'm going to do it nationally. John McCain uh, is following the campaign finance reform mm -hmm. law. And who isn't? I think we know who isn't. Yeah, we've gotten good at actually raising money. <laughs> yeah, I know. The Democrats are getting as good as the Republicans. We've yeah, got to say see? goodbye on that happy note. <laughs>